Okay, so remember that changed my voice. In part two, we left off talking about how he wouldn't call Christ a martial artist, and his title is God. You know, that, that he would call Christ's title God. And he says a king to him is someone who died for his sins and came back proving he is the only way. And he said not to being some type of martial artist or fighting. And he says we are God's warriors and showing our faith in him and his word and his resurrection. I put that comment here because it kind of got cut off there at the bottom. And remember it says that Nimrod was blessed by God. He's a great hunter, a mighty warrior. Now, th this is key here. This is, this is where I start to prove him wrong. Okay. You see, here it says, you know, I respond, I say, how did he prove to you that he did that? Okay, what am I referring to? He said he proved, okay, that he's a king by dying for his sins and coming back. So I said, how, how did he prove that to you, to you, that he did that? And read Psalm 45. How is the most excellent of men described? Mighty God that points to a warrior also. Okay, so in Psalm 45, New Living Translation, it says mighty warrior. I believe in King James Version, it says most mighty. A New International Version, it says mighty one. So it specifically says the most excellent of men is a mighty warrior of God. Okay. And Christ says he's the root and offspring of David, which I had pointed out earlier uh, in the conversation right here, right? The root and offspring of David. And New Living Translation says the source of his power, the heir to his throne. And of course, in the bright morning star, okay, the sun as the symbol of the bridegroom. And it's also referring to Psalm uh, 19 and other scriptures like Malachi and, and other ones that tell us the, the sun and his splendor. The Lord thy God is the sun and shield, the sun and righteousness in Malachi, so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's symbolic. Now, you know, we're going to have to make a part four, believe it or not, of this video series um, because I got cut off because of the length of this um, cardboard thing here. And I'm just going to show you it when I print it out. But I'm eventually going to explain to him, and he's going to agree, right, when he looks up the definition of martial artist, that it covers more than just fighting. Okay. Okay, so he says, not enough... Not though, not through being some type of martial artist or fighting, we are God's warriors and showing our faith in Him and His Word and His resurrection. So He says, faith in Him. So, so how are you gonna have faith in a book that says that He died and came back to life, and then use that as your proof? Christ in the in the Bible says, why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? So it's not right to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna cheat you out of your right to lead the entire Christian world because of what this book the colonists gave you said. So we need more than that argument. There's a lot of books, especially religious books and religious writings and, and, and carvings and what have you, that say a lot of things. So we're not doing God justice if we just assume that. We need more than that book statement, okay? Now, I then say Psalm 89. You're going to see how I come to my conclusions shortly, okay? I point to Psalm 89 also where it says God anointed a warrior, that David is a warrior that she's specifically referred to as a warrior, like in Psalm 45, the most excellent of men, who's also called God. If you go into Bible Gateway and you look at the footnotes, they came to the same conclusion I did, that the reason why he's called God is he's, re he's, he's being called God because it's referring to him as God's representative. Okay? That's why the king is called God, because he's God's representative. Okay, so they came to the same conclusion as I did, and they're almost certainly run by Trinitarians, right? People who believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the equality of the three. But yet they came to the same conclusion that in Psalm 45, the king is called God in a kind of symbolic way, in a kind of kind of figurative way. Not He's not actually God. For the same reason, Jesus is not actually God. And in the Bible, he says, the Father is greater than I. He's praying to God. He's saying, pray to the Father in heaven. Why isn't he saying, pray to him? And, and Christians, oftentimes, they say, in Jesus' name, as they pray to the Father, because the Father is the source of power, therefore he is greater. I brought this up many times. Is my right hand, my fleshly right hand, greater than my brain? No. If you cut off my right hand, I'll still live. But if you remove my brain, I'm going to die. And that is just, just 
the tip of the iceberg why God is greater than I am. Okay. So as we get to um, the next, for, the next uh, uh, comment, he says, He proved by not fighting and giving himself to the Romans. He did not fight and even said, Those who live by the sword die by the sword. I follow him. So, you know, this is interesting. This is a common misconception. So part of the part of the misconception, which is part of Christian confusion, I don't blame them for because it's it's such common it's such a common misconception that the churches and the Bible created. There's different gospels of what was said, okay? When Peter strikes the ear of the of the the I believe it was the servant of the high priest, okay, and what he says, okay, he says. You know, in one version, he says, don't do that because those who live by the sword die by the sword. In another version, he says, why are you trying to prevent me? I'm paraphrasing. Prevent me from tasting the cup, from drinking the cup my father gave me. Why are you trying to prevent me from being crucified? He's not saying don't use the sword because that would contradict the Old Testament. And it says Christ and God are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? And the Old Testament, they're killing people left and right with the sword. He's not saying don't use the sword. He's in, he's in the boundaries of what God has ordered already. Okay? Because if he's saying that, he's saying that David himself went to hell. Because David picked up the sword and killed people. Samson picked up a jawbone and killed people. Jonathan, the son of Saul, killed people. David's mighty man, 2 Samuel uh, uh, 23. So, by default... He's wrong in this statement. He said he proved by not fighting and giving himself to the Romans. That is a government statement. And that's why the Bible and the churches are there. They're there to get you to obey Lucifer and not resist while they're raping and killing people, which is not the message of Christ. And that's why my next comment says, read uh, Revelation 19. Again, he is waging war. Now, this is interesting, right? He's not raging war. In the, in the sense of him actually coming in the flesh and picking up a sword and, and riding a horse. He's raiding the war. But what is the war? It is the essence of martial arts. And later on, he'll concede this point to a certain degree. We'll get into the next part. I only got a couple minutes later. I want to finish the rest of this. Okay. So then I point to Luke 12, 49. He says, says he came to bring a fire, right? He came to bring a fire. He didn't come to bring peace. He didn't, he didn't give himself to the Romans and not fight them. When he gave himself to the Romans, it's like the, the cross is like a sword. The earth is like the flesh, right? He came there to thoroughly destroy the essence of the Romans and everyone else who didn't obey God and those who cheat me out of my right to lead, okay? Let's see, he said, it came to bring a fire and how I wish it was already kindled. Another version says he came to set the earth on fire. Spiritual fire. We see in Isaiah, I believe it is, it says, wickedness burns like a fire. He came as part of the spirit that is punishing those people for being wicked. It's the essence of striking them down. Now we see in the next comment, it says, Psalm 45 doesn't, message a, doesn't mention a strong martial artist. And he says, laughing my fucking ass off, right? M L M F A O. excuse my French. Where the hell you getting this from, bro? He goes on to say, bro, he's coming to bring fire in Revelation. And then and I, I put that twice because I put the next um, comment here. The comment, you know, I copied it, you know, in certain a certain way. And it says, I say, first define martial arts, martial artist correctly. Okay, I say, this is the mistake you're making, right? I say, first define martial artist correctly. Because that's another con uh, misconception that the churches and the Bible create. Now, how come every C Christian I come across, they don't understand how martial arts connects to the Bible? They don't understand that Jesus was not saying, don't defend yourself. He was not saying, if the time is right, don't strike your enemy. He was not saying, not, don't want to prevent a strike. He was not saying, if somebody comes to gun you down and you see him coming across the street and you have a chance to shoot him through your window, he's not saying, don't shoot him through the window just because it's against the law to shoot him through the window because they haven't crossed over into your property. He's not saying don't defend yourself. He's not saying don't launch a preemptive strike. As a character in the Bible. We're almost out of time. I said, then see Psalm 45, 3, because it says in different translations, okay? And he says, okay, so almost out of time, let's just shoot this. So he says, again, I'm reading, okay, I'm just going to have to do this in the next part, okay? So it says in the different translations, again, mighty warrior, mighty one, most mighty, 
And that is that is a, a martial art argument being made. Martial arts are lifestyles, right? And cultivating character and what it means to have character is, is a key part of martial arts. So what it means to have character is to move on the path of universal pinpointed moral precision and focus moral intensity, which leads to this kind of spirit argument. We'll get to it more in the next part. Thank you.